Let's talk about soldering. In the past, I've done videos and discussed the topic and showed people how to solder. Uh, I also promised that I would come back and do a more in-depth, detailed video on soldering and the techniques that I use. Uh, when I talk to builders, I know that a lot of guys really have a difficult time with soldering, just can't get it figured out, doesn't work, becomes a point of frustration. I get some guys who even ask me to solder up their components, which I really don't mind. But knowing how to solder is an important thing in this hobby. Uh, and it really doesn't take much to do it right. So I'll show you my techniques. And again, uh, if you look on YouTube, you're gonna find hundreds if not thousands of videos on how to solder. Uh, and I'm just going to add my two cents to that whole process. But I wanna show you how I solder and it seems to work for me. I've been doing uh, a lot of soldering through all the years, uh, even before cigar box guitars. And this kind of works for me. Uh, let me show you what I do. First thing we need to do is talk about solder itself. Uh, you buy it on a spool. Uh, I like to buy the .033 small diameter solder. Works out really well. The larger diameter solders, uh, they're just too cumbersome and they don't uh, tend to work well for me. So I stick with the small stuff. Solder is a material that's made of two things, lead and tin. It has a very low melting temperature, about 350 to 400 degrees. And when you melt it, it becomes a liquid and it will flow into a joint. If you're joining two wires or a wire in the tab, the solder will flow into that joint. And when it cools and it solidifies, it becomes a nice electrical connection and also a nice mechanical connection. To heat up this uh, solder and to get it flow, you need a soldering iron. This is a little cheapo Weller that I have, really small, lightweight, uh, works pretty well. Uh, probably it gets somewhere between uh, 500 and 600 degrees. Uh, this is only 18 watts, uh, but you can see it does a really good job of melting the solder. Let's talk about my process, and what I like to do is I like to talk about soldering as being kind of a two-step process. I prepare two separate components, and then I join them together. So there's actually, uh, again, two steps here, and let's, let's show you where I start. If I'm using some wire, what I do is I come in and I strip it back, you know, at least an inch and pull off the outer insulation and then open up the inside and what you'll find is there's usually a jacket and what I'll do is again I'll twist those wires together get them all pulled together make sure and look that you don't have any strays laying in there because those are a potential source of a problem so I've got the outside jacket pulled together and I've got it all spun up and it looks pretty good I come in on the inside and I take about a quarter of an inch a little bit more than a quarter inch and I strip the inside. This happens to be the white wire, which is the hot wire. And I grab those wires, and rather than trying to twist them, what I find works really well is to actually twist the bigger wire itself. And so now you have it spun together and it works really well. So again, as I talk about my two-step process, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and solder these. The actual term is tinning them. So again, I put them in my helping hands, which is just a really great tool to have, a way to hold wire and components uh, while you're soldering. Yeah, I take my soldering iron. It's good to have a little paper towel that's moist. Some guys use a sponge, get it moist. And what it does is, again, because the soldering iron is so hot and there's moisture in there, it kind of steam cleans the tip. And then you need to come back and you need to retin the, the tip. Put a little solder on there. If you get a little bit too much, you can kind of flick it off. Then I just lay the soldering iron underneath the wires. And all of a sudden, and very quickly, you can see that it melts the solder. And it actually, through capillary action, runs the entire length. I'm going to come over and do the same thing on the ground. And now I hey, have tinned both of these wires. You can take a look at them and inspect them closely. Sometimes you'll get kind of a, a chunk of solder out here at the end. It's no problem to come in and uh, trim that off. Uh, I usually like to shorten these a little bit. If I start off with a quarter of an inch or more, I like to trim them down to just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. So I've got those trimmed up and ready to go, and I'm going to be installing those on a jack. But the first thing we need to do is kind of understand a jack and how it operates because I do get a lot of questions when guys have a real bad hum, a real bad sound, and one of the first things I always do is make sure 
that they've connected <clears throat> the ground and the hot to the jack correctly. That seems to be kind of a, a, a popular uh, problem, a, a typical mistake that a lot of guys use. So let's take a look more closely at a jack so we know which one is the ground and which one is the hot. If you look at a plug, you'll see a long center section and that happens to be the ground on the plug. And the end piece, the little nub out here on the end, that's actually the hot. And when you put it in a jack, you can kind of see how the connection is made. There's this long tab that comes out, reaches out and touches, again, that hot tip out there. And then on the inside, what you can see, if you look closely, is you'll notice that there's a ring down here that happens to mate up with that ground section. And then you can kind of follow them around and see where they go. And you can notice that the ground one goes over to this tab and the hot snakes its way around to the backside to this tab. So now we know which one is the hot and which one is the ground. And so we're able to make the connections. Again, in using my technique of pre-soldering the components, what I like to do is come in and put some solder on the tabs. There are these holes there and you often think you're supposed to stick your wire through there and solder it, uh, but that's not necessary. So I stick the soldering iron in there and I come up with a nice little puddle of solder. Looking at closely, you can kind of see what I've done is, uh, again, put enough solder on there to build these nice little pads of solder. Now the way this should work out is that we now have the wires that are tinned, and I'm gonna switch over to this because it's connected to the uh, potentiometer. We have some wires that are connected. We have the ground and then we have the hot. And again, we know that the one on the left is the uh, ground. So all I do is then come back, and I'm gonna trim this off just a little bit because it's a little bit long. Come back and touch that solder pad. And it will make a connection. Did it with the ground, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the hot. and you heat up the solder and it reflows around the connection and you've got a nice connection. One thing to be careful is when you're doing the jacks is make sure that you keep the wires fairly short because if you make them too long, there's a possibility that that ground could interfere with the jack and you'll have a real problem on your hands. The next thing I wanna talk about is soldering to a, uh, a potentiometer. And as you know, and as we've discussed most often, the volume pot is actually where all of the grounds connect. It's kind of a, what I call ground central. That's where all of the connections go for the ground. Uh, as you can see, this jack I have already by uh, soldering the jack on, I've now got it connected and I've connected the hot to the center lug and I've connected the, uh, the ground to the back of the solder of the volume pot. So let's take a look at that and we'll make again a, n a nice little connection there. Because a pot has a lot of metal, it can absorb a lot of heat. It's kind of like a big heat sink. So it takes a little bit longer to get a solder pad on there. And so what you have to do is you have to heat up the back, let the solder set there for, soldering iron set there for a few seconds. And then we come in and we begin to flow a nice little pad of solder. Usually I'm already ready with my pre-tinned wire and I just set it on there and let it flow. And now I have a nice connection. If you need to, you can come back and you can add a little bit more solder and you get a nice connection. Then you could come back and depending on where this wire needs to go, maybe it needs to go to the pickup or uh, go to one of the tabs, you can make that connection. Well, I hope this is helpful. Again, my idea is to solder the two components individually and then heat them up and put them together and you'll get your nice final connection. Hope this helps. Thanks.